Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the holiday edition of the Coach's Show here tonight. Don Brooks, along with Mitchell Johnson, bringing you the final show of the 1995 football season. We've selected the all-area team, Mitchell, the second annual edition here for TV7, TV34. A lot of good football players in this area. We're going to call them out here tonight. We certainly are, you know, and uh, we've got a lot of footage to show the fans there. And, you know, really uh, some hard decisions we had to make to come up with uh, a few particular players to represent uh, the county as a whole or maybe outside the county with our all-area picks. Uh, we've got a wide variety of uh, quality football players here around the area. We've got our choices made, and we're excited to get to them here shortly. Just to let you know how we compile the uh, winners here tonight, uh, it was six people who voted. We took the votes of all six people who had worked throughout the season with our TV7, TV34 sports crew. And we've come up with some winners. We had some ties in some categories. But we're going to get all to all that, and we're going to start off with the defense right after this break. Welcome back to the holiday edition of the Coaches Show. We're going to start now with the defense, uh, selecting the teams. First of all, the defensive line of the year and first of all we have a guy who came into the season uh, not many people had heard of him and that's Andy Scoggins Mitchell from Bruce. We certainly did and Andy has uh, turned out to be an outstanding football player this particular season. Uh, I think he's been over there with the Trojans a couple of years and he did a very fine job this year opening up holes for um, several running backs on offense as well and, and we got him listed as defensive lineman here. Of course, he made a lot of solo tackles, and uh, he opened up the holes on defense for the linebackers to bust through there and make several tackles as well. He's in on several assists. Uh, he was our selection as one of the defensive linemen of the year, Andy Scoggins. Action here against Calhoun City, I believe, and there's an interception Scoggins made against the Wildcats. Scoggins wearing number 60 and number 9 throughout the year, of course, because, because he was moved to tight end at one point uh, during the season. You see him there wearing number 9. Andy Scoggins from Bruce, defensive lineman. Next up, we also stay in Trojan country with defensive lineman Jason Jenkins of the Bruce Trojans. Here's a good shot of Jason here uh, as they were giving their introductions before the season began, I believe. Uh, you know, Jason did an outstanding job as well. Uh, when you've got Jason Jenkins and Andy Scoggins on defense, it's really no surprise uh, that the Trojans were as outstanding as they were on defense this year. Okay, moving on over to uh, Calhoun City, also on the defensive line this year, senior Michael Wortham was selected as a defensive lineman for the Calhoun City Wildcats. You know, I asked Michael one time how much he has eaten at one sitting, and he told me one time he had six chickens, whole chickens one time, and uh, four of those were dead. So, you know, he really is. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding there, Michael. Michael is an outstanding athlete. We had an opportunity to talk to him uh, over the radio station a lot this year, and we talked to him, and he was, you know, y'all had a lot of coverage with him as well over here at the TV station, and he's just an outstanding ball player. Michael's a good guy. He's been bugging me for two years to give him an interview, and I finally uh, got around to doing it this year. He's in his senior campaign. Uh, final defensive lineman is a defensive end, also from Calhoun City, who came in as a freshman, and uh, he's only going to get better uh, as the seasons continue, and that's Bernard Sykes. Yeah, Bernard, he did an outstanding job this year, and he really surprised me being only a freshman, as you mentioned. Uh, for example, right here, making the sack with a North Pontotoc quarterback. He did that all season long. You know, he's just an outstanding defensive lineman, no doubt about it. Uh, the only unanimous decisions on the defensive line uh, receiving all six votes were Andy Scoggins and Michael Wortham also receiving votes. We want to congratulate them as honorable mention Damon Phillips for Calhoun City and Darius Brown from Amory also. Uh, next up we have the linebackers and we picked three linebackers on the defense and this was probably the easiest to pick Mitchell. Uh, these guys stand out as being solid linebackers uh, for the respective teams and first of all senior Casey Clark from Bruce. Casey did an outstanding job as well from a linebacker position on defense for the Trojans this year. Uh, Casey, he did everything the coaching staff asked of him and more. You know, he was in on all the stops virtually that I could recollect on the running plays. He had a hand in it at least on several of them, you know, unless he broke into the defensive secondary. And, of course, it was defensive back the job then to make the stop. But Casey was just an outstanding uh, ball player and an outstanding selection as far as our all-area team is concerned. You know, when you and I went through these tapes, we kind of said uh, we thought he favored Will Clark a little bit. He certainly pitches. does. Uh, <laughs> Casey Clark, Will Clark, who knows? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, next up, we have a all-state performer in defense, a linebacker. Uh, solid as a rock, this guy, 6'3", 230, and that's Armiga Spearman from the Bruce Trojans. Yeah, Armiga, he, what can you say? You know, he really put on a show this year. Uh, offensively as well to go along with our linebacker selection on defense. I noticed from the Jackson Clearing Ledger he was selected as a, a player down there for the All-State team and here's a demonstration of some of the performance he put on this year again against the Wildcats 
you know, when you got a Spearman and a Clark in a linebacker positions uh, for one team, uh, you know the opposing offenses are in for a long night. Two guys that will be hard to replace for Phil Ferguson next year uh, for the Bruce Trojans as they'll move on uh, to greener pastures, hopefully. Uh, next up at linebacker, mm. uh, another all our state performer, and that's Chad Cook of the Calhoun City Wildcats. Chad was just, uh, he, he really did it all. He did it, did it when he had to. Chad's got a lot of heart. You know, uh, in the first meeting between Bruce and Calhoun City, for example, of course, most of our fans know Bruce was victorious in that particular game. Uh, Chad, you know, he never gave up on the, and there he is making a safety right there, but he never gave up on the, the side of getting back to the state championship. You know, he was not able to play last year because of an automobile accident that he suffered, but uh, he was able to participate this past time in the state championship against Taylorsville, and uh, Chad just did an outstanding job from the linebacker position this year. And of course, here's a big hit against uh, Bruce in the playoff game. Defensive backs this year, we had four of those, and uh, this was a little bit harder to decide. You have a lot of good uh, speed and uh, ability in the backfield for the teams around this area. Uh, first of all, from the Bruce Trojans, we have Andre Anderson. Andre did an outstanding job in the defensive backfield. Uh, I've often heard it said, and I believe it too, because of personal experience, that the defensive back probably is, is the most, uh, you know, the hardest position to play on the football team. You've got to worry about the pass interference calls. You've got to blanket uh, your man. You've got to have that coverage there. And it is an extremely hard position to play on the football mm -hmm. field. But uh, Andre did an outstanding job at that and, and at times made it look easy. And I did want to mention before we move on that uh, Armiga Spearman and Chad Cook were both in unanimous decisions at linebacker. There was no doubt about those two guys. Uh, also a defensive back, another unanimous decision. This guy had at least a dozen interceptions, uh, probably this year, maybe more. And that's Anthony Spencer. And he had to have the most highlights of anybody when we would look back at these uh, highlight films. Oh, no doubt. He played on special teams, offense, and defensive back as well, as you mentioned. Here's a particular shot of him returning a punt, I believe, on special teams for Bruce going the distance, going to the end zone. You know, uh, the most things that I can remember as far as he is concerned is basically on offense. But as you mentioned, he did play a critical role as a defensive back as well. Here he is making the grab, and he's going to go. I think he might have scored there. Got out of cam camera angle view, but he did score there. And every time I looked up this year, he had his hands on the football, whether it be, like I mentioned, on special teams, defense, or offense, and he can really make things happen fast. Not a very big guy, but very hard to tackle, and he has very good speed. And we'll see if Anthony moves on uh, to play some college ball uh, next season in 96 football season. Also, uh, for Vardaman, we had a good defensive back, a guy who has uh, made the big plays for the Rams this year and helped them get to the playoffs again this year, and that's Nick Pinson. Nick's an outstanding athlete. Uh, I know Nick personally, and uh, I can tell you that he is swift. There's no doubt about it. Uh, he can do it all, and uh, he has, was depended upon a lot this season by the Vardaman Rams. And you just saw we're up next our final candidate for defensive back, and that is Damon Campbell of the Calum City Wildcats, another big play man in Damon. They depended on Damon a lot. He made a lot of INTs this year, batted a lot of balls down. I remember in particularly a couple of the playoff games, uh, Damon knocked a few passes down that were probably going to be caught. And Damon seemingly came out of nowhere to knock the ball down in the defensive secondary and probably uh, you know, at least cost the opposing team a big gain, if not a touchdown. Uh, we do want to mention also receiving votes. An honorable mention for defensive <laughs> back were Jerome Tucker of Calhoun City, Ken Jones of Senatobia, and George Walls of Water Valley, all excellent athletes also receiving votes from our panel of votes. Uh, voters here in the TV7, TV34 all area team. Now we come to the point, they're the 11 players on defense and now time to select the defensive player of the year and this one here was pretty much almost unanimous. Uh, we did have one vote for Bernard Sykes, our runner up, but uh, it, it's going to go to the guy from Bruce, Armiga Spearman. And deservedly so. Armiga Spearman right there, a good shot at him. Our uh, defensive player of the year here, all area team from TV7, TV34. And we've got a few more shots of some great plays our Mega Spearman made during the season. And as you watch them, we're going to take you to a station break and be back with the offense right after this. Welcome back to the Coach's Show. Don Brooks along with Mitchell Johnson as we're closing out the 1995 football season. You know, it's been a couple of weeks since football season uh, ended, Mitchell, with the loss at the state championship by Calhoun City. But, of course, it takes a while to get all these uh, highlights and stuff together and to... Uh, figure out who's going to win, you know. Yeah, we had a tough decision. We mentioned that earlier in the earlier part of the broadcast. Uh, you know, virtually, you, you can pick anybody, really, out of the whole uh, the teams in the county and outside of the, round, the surrounding counties. And 
Uh, they had a lot of quality athletes around. It was very tough for us, but uh, these are just our peaks. These are not necessarily everyone else's peaks. Everybody's got their favorite. We understand that too. So, and one of the hardest mm -hmm. things to pick, you know, was offensive line. Uh, you have a lot of good players who do the dirty work. Uh, you know, open up the holes for the great runners and the great quarterbacks and receivers, and then don't get a lot of recognition. And that's the hardest thing for us to pick out because you know you're not focusing on the offensive line when you're watching the game. You're usually focusing on who has the ball. But uh, we did come up with five that we think are pretty good candidates. And, of course, the first one we have uh, is Ben Collins of uh, Calum City. Very good football player in himself. No doubt. And as you mentioned, uh, the, all the offensive linemen really don't get a whole lot of recognition. But this is our opportunity to give them the recognition they deserve. We've got some, some uh, footage here of opening up some holes. Uh, one, one spot there anyway, open up a hole for running back to run through, and they really make your backfield look good. You know, if the offensive lineman, if they don't do their job, there we go again, if they don't do their job, nothing else can happen. You know, and that's, that's where it all boils down to, the war in the trenches. Next up at offensive line, we also had mm -hmm. a, uh, another good player, and that is Samuel Vance from Calhoun City. Yeah, Samuel, uh, he, along with Ben, they both did an outstanding job this year. Uh, and deservedly so, winning the uh, Offensive Lineman Awards from our all-area team here. And this is going to be a play right here where the, uh, Samuel alertly reached up and just grabbed the ball out of the air and advanced it forward for Calum City, and that's a little extra. You don't really expect that from Offensive Lineman. He was very aware of what was going on in that particular play, and uh, our hats go off to him. Mitchell, not very often do you get to see your Offensive Lineman touch the ball, but that was a, one of the rare occasions when Samuel was able to pick off the deflection and carry it on downfield for a few more yards. Also for Water Valley uh, this year, another good offensive lineman. We had a chance to see the Blue Devils uh, several times this year. And Sam Pryor opened up the holes for George Walls and Reggie Pulley. Of course, this is coming from the very first game of the year that we did uh, back in August up at Ole Miss at Vault Hemingway when the Blue Devils started off the season against Holly Springs, coming out victorious. Of course, Sam Pryor, one of the big offensive linemen for the Water Valley Blue Devils. Also, we have uh, a guy who also was selected to the defense, and that is offensive lineman Jason Jenkins of Bruce. Yeah, Jason's did an outstanding job both ways this time on offense and defense as well. And, uh, you know, that's fast becoming a thing of the past to play to go both ways. But uh, back when you and I played, probably didn't have enough players for everybody to be able to rest on offense, defense, or special teams. And he's sort of a throwback to those days. You know, he goes both ways, plays hard on both sides of the ball. Just an outstanding offensive lineman. And our final pick, of course, a guy a little bit out of the area, and that is Larry Mathis from Taylorsville, as you saw that play there opening up a hole. Uh, you know, you and I both had a chance to see Taylorsville, and they're definitely one hoss of a football team, and that offensive line is the key to their success uh, over the last few years. And Larry Mathis is the leader as a senior, and he's an all-state performer, top 100 in the state. So we felt we needed to give it to him. Key word you said there, senior. Mm -hmm. Maybe he'll be out of the picture next year if everybody's going to have to worry about him, the Calhoun City or Bruce or whoever may be playing hopefully next year in the state championship. Uh, also next up, a guy who plays on the offensive line but also can catch a few passes, and that's a tight end. And Mitchell, we had a tie at this position. Uh, both players receiving two votes apiece. And the first one from Bruce, Casey Clark. Casey Clark, you know, we just talked about him a moment or two ago. He can do it all on both sides of the football, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, Casey's just an all-out. He gives it everything he's got. I remember one particular play this year. Uh, I forget the Bruce opponent, but it was being played at Trojan Field out there, and uh, Tillman overshot him a little bit. But Casey was really giving all he had. He never gave up on the pass, and that's something the coaches look for. Even though you, you might know that you don't think you can make a good play or make the catch or make the pass work, you go all out regardless, and that's just an example of Casey Clark right there. Once again, a solid football player and a solid person in Casey Clark. Uh, also tying for the tight end position was Martin Parker of Vardaman receiving two votes. And you know, Sean Parker hit Martin Parker about <laughs> as often as he did anybody in that Vardaman yeah. offense. Yeah, that Parker to Parker connection was deadly as far as the Rams are concerned. You know, they made it to the playoffs, and they were eliminated in the first round of the playoffs, uh, which surprised me. I thought Vardman would probably go a lot farther, but Martin did an outstanding job all year long. He really came up with a lot of catches I didn't think he was going to be able to make, and he would just dive for the ball or make some outstanding grabs, one uh, circus catches one way or the other, and it was dependable. You know, Sean could go to him on certain third-down situations, you know, a possession play coming up, and they had to have four or five yards. You could go to Martin, and you could just about bet he's going to get his hands on the football, too. You know, Vardaman probably passes more than anyone in this county. They, are. they use the air attack a lot, Sean Parker, and with a good throwing arm, 
Of course, they had Skinner before then, and of course, uh, Parker, uh, Martin Parker, one of those targets that he likes to hit. Also receiving votes for tight end, we have Rufus French, of course. You and I had a chance to see him uh, in the state championship game for Amory. He's maybe the top prospect in the state at his position. And, of course, Bubba Fleming of Calhoun City, another good football player over there uh, at tight end as well. Yeah, Bubba made a lot of outstanding catches all year long. One in particular I can think of in that particular game in the state championship down to Jackson. Uh, it was a third down situation, I think, and Calhoun City had a long way to go to get the first down. But Bubba, out of that tight end position, made the grab, and he has done that uh, a lot this year, and you can really depend on Bubba Fleming as well, outstanding athlete for the Wildcats. Wide receiver is up next, and we had a tough decision on this as well. A lot of good athletes in the area uh, at wide receiver. First up, though, we have uh, Brad Logan of the Bruce Trojans, and he made some great catches throughout the season. Brad's just an all-around athlete. Uh, we happened to, to pick him in the wide receiver position, but we could have picked him in several others, too. Maybe we will before the, before the show concludes here. Uh, There's going to be some footage here of Brad making some great grabs, uh, that particular one for a touchdown as far as the Trojans are concerned. You know, Brad, uh, he, he was a lot like Martin Parker was for Vardaman. You know, he was their go-to guy when they had to have it. Uh, and they threw it, get it in the vicinity of Brad. He's going to go up and make the catch in, in traffic as he did right there. Outstanding athlete in Brad Logan. Next up, we have uh, from the Bruce Trojans as well, Anthony Spencer. And he was a unanimous at offense uh, as he was on defense. And what else can you say about this guy? Uh, He's very exciting, that's all you can say. Yeah, he's got speed. I think if you had to use one word, and concentration, as, as that was the example of right there, over the shoulder grab. But, you know, you ever give him a step or two, and he'll take a mile. He, he's got outstanding speed. He can cut on a dime. You know, he reminds me a lot of the uh, professional running backs, your Emmett Smith or, or Michael Irvin, in, more in particular at the wide receiver position. But uh, he really can do it all. Outstanding athlete. And we also had a tight wide receiver and one more pick that uh, I'm not sure if you had a chance to see him, but uh, several of us did. He <coughs> plays for Oxford, and he has blazing speed as well. And his name is Rory Redmond, a great wide receiver for the Oxford Chargers this year. As we continue to look at a few more highlights of uh, Anthony Spencer uh, making some great punt returns. I think this particular return was against North Pontotoc. Probably I was not in, uh, in attendance in that particular game, but I did get to see enough of him this year to know what, what he can do to an opposing team, and he was deadly. A lot of teams uh, before the game concluded got to where they would punt the ball away from him or try to keep it away from him in some form or fashion, and they knew what he could do to him. This is a prime example of some of that right here. This here is one of the best runs that uh, we saw in a punt return all season, taking it back across the field and taking it down close to the goal line. And Anthony Spencer, unanimous decision at wide receiver. And now you took a look at Rory Redmond of Oxford, our third choice for wide receiver. And we're going to take a look at one of the plays here against Calhoun City when Chad Hill connected to Rory Redmond on a post pattern for a touchdown. Yeah, and I think this might have been earlier in the year, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and possibly some of the heat factor played a role in that game as well. We saw a game earlier where an interception was returned for something like the 100 yards and everybody fell out <laughs> before they got to the end zone. So uh, the heat was definitely on in that particular part of the year. And we'll take a look at that play that you mentioned here in just a few moments. But uh, now we're coming to running back as we're almost complete with the offense. Running back, another tough position to call. You have a lot of good running backs in this area. First of all, at running back, tailback, Mr. Everything, Santo Armstrong. You know, Santo has been uh, the Wildcats' bread and butter man now for two or three years. Uh, they've given the ball to him when they had to have the necessary yardage needed. He's responded most of the time in, in high fashion. He was injured part of the year this year. Didn't get to play as much as he probably wanted to. But, uh, you know, what can you say? He received all kind of awards all during the season. Got all kind of recognition in the, in the newspapers, in the bigger newspapers even uh, in the state. And, uh, you know, he deservedly so. I mean, he was an outstanding athlete. He really gave it his all. And he was surrounded by quality athletes as well. And that says a lot for the Calhoun City team as a whole. And, of course, Santo Armstrong uh, for the second year in a row receiving running back uh, for the all-area team. Uh, next up at fullback, we have a big guy who's a load to pull down when he gets uh, steam rolling, and that is Armiga Spearman of the Trojans. No question. You know, he has size to go along with that speed. We talked a moment or two ago about all the blazing speed. Well, you know, you try, to, uh, you try to catch him, and by the time you catch him, maybe you th wished you had not caught him. <laughs> I mean, he could, he, and for example, right there, I mean, he drags a defender with him in the end zone. We saw that all year long. You know, he's got those powerful legs. He gets him churning down the far sideline in this particular play. First of all, as I mentioned, it's hard to catch, but after you catch him, you haven't done anything yet. you still got to get him on the ground. So in more cases than not, it took two or three defenders to, to bring him down. 
You know, on that first play, Mitchell looked like he'd be good at the 400-meter hurdles also. <laughs> as he jumped right over that defensive lineman uh, and had a nice run. And here he is uh, against Oklahoma, which got them on the board and a big victory on the year for the Trojans in defeating the Chieftains. Yeah, you know, Bruce shut Oklahoma out in that particular game. I don't believe Oklahoma scored a single point, and that says a really lot for the Trojan defense as well. You know, it's not many times you see Oklahoma shut out. They have a, a good football team year in and year out, of course. Fortunately this year, both Bruce and Calum City are able to defeat Oklahoma and move on to the uh, North Half Championship. Next up, we have a kicker, and uh, this one here, pretty easy to call. This guy is a super kicker, and he's going to be back for two more years for the Bruce Trojans. Uh, Freddie Bullard, both punting and field goal kicking. Yeah, Freddie's uh, Morton Anderson in the making right here, i tell you <laughs> what. Uh, Maybe I need to go down and sign him with the Saints or something. They definitely need some help. But Freddie was an outstanding asset to the Trojans all year long. Here's a prime example of that uh, long field goal there. It looks like about 35 yards, perhaps, something along that line of that particular kick. And uh, I mean, he might have won a game or two for him. I believe I remember one in particular against Water Valley that he pulled it out for the Trojans. So they depended on him a lot this year. That's what you're looking at right here. Uh, under pressure, Freddie Bullard connecting to give the Trojans an 8-7 to seven victory over Water Valley. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, the first time Bruce has beat Water Valley in several years, he was very instrumental in that victory uh, for the Bruce Trojans, keeping their season at that point undefeated uh, by defeating the Blue Devils by the score of 8-7. to seven. Final position on the year is uh, quarterback. But before we get into that, I do want to mention uh, some of the runner-ups for receiver and running back that I failed to uh, mention just a while ago. At receiver Marvin Kirkendall from Water Valley, a Amory, who set the state record for yardage this year, and Marcus Thomas of the Bruce Trojans, who will most likely uh, be a all-area pick next year, a fine player, only a junior. He'll be back for one more season. They also receive votes at their respective positions. So we're up to quarterback now, and uh, quarterback really wasn't that hard to decide. Well, receiving four out of the six votes was the all-state performer just up the road up in Oxford by the name of Chad Hill. Yeah, and I'm sure that uh, being from Oxford, as you mentioned, that the Rebels are very interested in Mr. Hill there. You know, he put on quite a display all year long. Chad, uh, he could do it all, basically. He could run the ball. He could uh, run the option, I believe. He had a, a gun for an arm. And he had some speed to go along with all that, too, which is highly unusual. You, know, you get the whole package with Chad Hill. Here he is uh, basically outrunning the whole defense here. And he did that on several occasions. And uh, he was our pick, and deservedly so, quarterback, Chad Hill. Both a good runner and a good uh, passer indeed. And speaking of the Rebels, he has signed with the Rebels to play baseball. Shortstop, and of course he may elect to play football as well. We don't know about that, but we'll just have to wait and see uh, on that situation. Uh, he had some good receivers there. You saw him connecting to Rory Redmond. And here's another good run after this slant play. Uh, by Chad Hill. Certainly was, and then that right there, that particular play showed his ability to read the defense. You know, he looked up and saw what the defense was showing him. He might have audibled at the line, I'm not sure, but he sure hit that tight end or wide receiver coming across from the slant pattern, as you mentioned, quickly over the middle without any fear of throwing an INT. So uh, he really had the whole, whole package, Chad Hill. Of course, Chad has a brother who's playing at Ole Miss now, Walt, and his uh, younger brother, Jake, who will most likely be the starting quarterback next year, and of course his father, Johnny Hill is the coach up at Oxford, so it's a lot of Hills up in the Lafayette area, just like we have a lot of Armstrongs and Thomases around this area, uh, continuing year after year to uh, uh, come out with good football players. But there's a look at the quarterbacks. Also receiving votes was the uh, Bruce Trojan quarterback, Keith Tillman, and of course, Romero Miller from Shannon. Not a lot of people had a chance to see him, but he'll be back again next year, and he's a very talented quarterback over there uh, toward Tupelo. He certainly is. So we're going to cut you to a station break. Uh, well, first of all, before we do that, let me mention we do have an Offensive Player of the Year. I'm sorry about that. Uh, Santo Armstrong was our Offensive Player of the Year this year for the second consecutive year. And Santo moving on to possibly play college ball, or as Coach Raves told us, he could be a pick in baseball. So we'll wait and see on that. But Santo Armstrong receiving Offensive Player of the Year. He certainly was, and a couple of other players receiving votes that, that were not elected to Offensive Player of the Year position, but they were certainly good offensive players, were Anthony Spencer and Chris Langford as well. We're going to take you to a station break, and as we go, let's look at some highlights of Santo Armstrong with some big runs this year, and Santo, the Offensive Player of the Year.
Welcome back to the Coach's Show. Uh, we have the offense and defensive linemen, uh, and all of them taken care of now. And now we're going into our specialty uh, as far as the game of the year. Uh, last year, it was pretty obvious. Uh, Calhoun City Bruce and the onside kick and all of that that we remember. This year, though, we had a three-way tie. Mitchell, we never figured this would happen. Uh, <laughs> six people voting, but we had a three-way tie. And the first one, uh, one of them was Calhoun City versus Oklahoma over in Oklahoma. Yeah, that was a whale of a ball game. Uh, if our fans would remember, the uh, Oklahoma Chieftains jumped out early all over Calhoun City with a, a what about an 80-yard TD return on the part of the Chieftains there. And, uh, Calhoun City got behind quickly, but Armstrong returned the favor in the second half kickoff, and he ran it back for about 80 yards or somewhere there about. Outstanding ball game, and it, you know, it, it deserved a vote or two for the game of the year. And you can probably imagine what the other two were. First of all, Bruce versus Calhoun City in the regular season. Bruce winning 14 to 6 in that one. Yeah, man, I tell you what, there was a lot of pregame hype going into that particular ball game. Uh, you know, it, Bruce and Calhoun City, that says it all in itself right there. Uh, a lot of people knew that these two were probably meeting later on in the season uh, for possibly the North Half Championship, which is exactly what happened. Uh, Bruce was lucky enough in that particular game uh, to come out on top, and uh, deservedly so. They played an outstanding ball game against Calhoun City there. Uh, also, the playoff game between Bruce and Calhoun City was our third choice uh, for game of the year. Calhoun City victorious in that one, and Mitchell, the first time that those two have met in the North Half Championship. Yeah, that's right, and uh, you know, I was just glad that one of the two schools were going to be able to go represent the North Half in the state championship. Regardless of who won, of course, we had to be impartial. You know, I like, I like Bruce a lot, I like Calhoun City a lot, but I was glad, and it was really bad and sad that, that one team had to be eliminated in that game. Both of them had outstanding seasons. They'd already met earlier in the year, as we mentioned, with Bruce beating Calhoun City, and Calhoun City returned a favor for the North Half Championship over there at the Boneyard. Just an outstanding ball game. You know, every now and then, Mitchell, we get people that, you know, think that we might be partial, but everybody knows we're from Bartman, right? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, there all you go. three teams, you know, having excellent seasons indeed, and of course, Water Valley going to the playoffs as well, uh, having a good season as well. Uh, coach of the year, another tough one to pick, but... Uh, you know, there's a lot of good coaches in this area, but this guy here in his first year took his team to an undefeated almost through the, well, all the way through the regular season and into the playoffs, Bruce Trojan's coach, Phil Ferguson. Absolutely. Phil just did an outstanding job his first full year as he, at the head coaching helm for the Bruce Trojans. What more could you have asked for? Only one, just one win away from a state uh, championship appearance and his first ever try at the head coaching helm, as I mentioned. And uh, Phil's just an all-around great guy as well. You know, I got a chance to interview him several times during the process, course of the year. And uh, he was always very uh, generous and, and uh, he was always quick to come for an interview or whatever. He did everything you'd ask of him. And I'm sure the, uh, I, I know one thing for sure, the people of Bruce and the school as a whole are very fortunate to have Phil Ferguson at the head coaching ham over there. Right, and he's, you know, young, has a lot of years ahead of him as a good uh, head football coach, uh, with, whether it's at Bruce or wherever. But, uh, you know, a lot of good coaches, we do want to uh, say this, uh, you know, all the coaches in this area are very easy to get along with and very easy and cooperative when it comes to uh, interviews and stuff like that. They certainly are. And also, I might point out, too, here that receiving a vote, uh, you might, you were going to say this probably, but receiving a vote also, or a couple of votes in the Coach of the Year category was Mike Ray. And, and this was Mike's first year at the head coaching helm as well at Calhoun City. And he did carry his Wildcats all the way to state championship, unfortunately, to be defeated by Taylorsville, but he did an outstanding job as well. Of course, Mike, uh, you know, having a tough job, it, it started off tough in the early of the season because they had a lot of bigger schools to play, but they made it through those and uh, got back to the state championship game, and, you know, a lot of expectations were on his back because everybody expected Calhoun City to go back to the state championship game, which they did, but it was a hard road to get there. Well, you know, Mike and company, he inherited this tough schedule from such success that Calhoun City had last year, the previous year. And uh, he was up against uh, the Oxfords and uh, what have you. Going to, and San Antonio going through the course of the season. He did the best job he could possibly do under the circumstances he was under. And he got his team all the way back to state championships. So he did an outstanding job this year, Mike Ray. And now, for what we've all been waiting for, our play of the year, we have the top three plays of the year as voted. Uh, by the TV7, TV34 staff. And the first play of the year was the big hit by Chad Cook in the playoff game. And, uh, you know, this one was an unbelievable hit. Uh, and Chad Cook, very instrumental in that victory over the Bruce Trojans. 
No question about it. And to Billy Nelson, this was of biblical proportions. Uh, <laughs> if we could get the sound in on this, I'm sure you'd be able to pick up what I'm talking about here. He was behind the mic on the play by play. Billy, Billy was with the color. And uh, that was a monster hit on the part of Chad Cook. We'll take a look at that a little bit later. We, we, we have that action on uh, Billy Nelson's call of that play, and it was a very good call Here we indeed. Go. With the hit, Omar Costales is going to but we'll, we'll go to that a little bit later anyway. But uh, second runner up um, for the uh, play of the year was a play that not all of us had a chance to see, so it was tough to pick. But uh, Joe Russell and myself had a chance to see this play, and it was a good play indeed by Kenzaki Jones of Senatobia. Just take a look at this run he makes right here. Well, this is one we were talking about earlier, Don, that it was in the heat, you know, had such extreme heat, and he makes the INT. And what looks to be about a 90-yard INT return goes the distance. Everybody's falling out on the field. I'm telling you, man, this is some kind of interception return as far as uh, Kenzaki Jones is concerned. Didn't they name a motorcycle company after him? I'm not sure. I think so. But <laughs> Take a look at Bubba Fleming right here. Oh, uh, Bubba's just exhausted. And, and Jones just falls out as well in the end zone. I mean, everybody's just really, really just spent. I mean, it's, that's unbelievable. That was one play that really stands out in your mind uh, when you go back and look at that. And, of course, our winner for player, play of the year was a big reverse by Anthony Spencer, which got the Trojans on the roll in the first game and a victory over Calum City. Man, I was calling this one from the press box over there at uh, D.L. Harrison Field, and it's, I can still remember just about every facet of the play. It's one of those plays that sticks with you for a year or two before it eventually leaves your memory banks, I guess. But, man, I tell you, this was really an outstanding play. Deserve it of the winner of the play of the year, no question about it. Anthony Spencer, of course, had a lot of plays that could have easily been picked, but this one here was the one that really helped his team the most uh, because a lot of those other big plays were in blowout games, but this one was at crunch time. Well, you know... I the thing that impressed me about this particular play, I don't think that Bruce really fooled Callum City that much on the reverse play. It was just the fact that they couldn't catch him. Just, they just turned it on down the far sideline, and it was you know off to the races. Tiptoe down that sideline as you take a look at one more time at the play of the year by Anthony Spencer. This is one amazing run, to say the least. We're going to take you to another station break, and we're going to be back, Mitchell, with uh, some of the comments of the year from our announcing team. Welcome back to the Coach's Show, and I hope you enjoyed the all-area team. A lot of good athletes in this area, and some of them will move on, and you'll be seeing them on uh, ESPN in a few years, hopefully, in college <laughs> football. But now we put together some highlights of uh, some of the memories that we have throughout the season as far as some of the great calls or some of the different calls anyway. And as announcers, you know, everybody makes mistakes on these uh, games, and we've got some of the... Uh, ones that stood out as far as the 1995 football season. That's exactly right. These are not necessarily bloopers, unless you want to call them that, but uh, this is going to be some quality entertainment right here. Just stay tuned for this. Drop the ball, still all around, recovered by Bruce Trojans at the 40. Brad Logan fell on it, and a big break for the Trojans. Brad Logan on the fumble recovery, Trojans first and 10 on the blue devil. And why in the world? Do you want to try to run an option play with Pulley? Five second clock might have. Chad Cook breaks. He breaks on through and uh, down to the 11 yard line. That was a good play by Chad Cook, man. Full back dive right up the middle. Everything opened up for him and he just running like a freight train. Hard line. Score! Reggie Pulley, touchdown. You can see Jerome Tucker keeps the ball. He's running it around. Uh, got one man to beat. He, he uh, doing a little dance steps down there, and he beats his man, and he's pushed out at about the uh, 14 to 13. The quarterback and uh, it's Kellen City intercepts the ball, number 20, Jeremy Ezel. Jeremy Ezel intercepts the ball and runs the ball down for about eight. signal and we're underway nice over end kickoff gonna be taken in there by Coleman Coleman comes up the middle he could go all the way Coleman at the 50 to 45 to 40 he's going all the way 20 15 10 5 touchdown Joe Coleman for the Rams what a way to start home Johnson and Pennsylvania
the wideouts. Parker looks for Johnson down the side. Complete! What a catch on the part of number 23, Keith Johnson. Folks, you don't see that kind of catch on Sunday. What a catch on the part of Keith Johnson in eighth grade. There's a give to Havens. Touchdown! <laughs> Formation behind Tillman. Spencer, I believe, to the near side. Go to the reverse to Spencer. He's got some room. It's going to be Spencer. Did he, did he take it in? Touchdown, Touchdown. Touchdown. We made the comment. We made the comment about two minutes ago. Both of these. Campbell has an opening bill. He's at the 40, the 50, the 40. He's at the 30. What a run by Campbell of the Wildcats. And you know they need the big play. They give it to number two, David Campbell. Boop. Calls his signals. Give the first second man through his Thomas. Look out, Marcus, Marcus Thomas. Thomas. He could go he right could go. Marcus Thomas. Down to the 15-yard line. The to the Wildcat 15 and a touchdown saving tackle by Bernard Simon. <laughs> Bully on the option, around the right end. Bully down the sideline. Pulley juking, moving. Pulley fumbles into the end zone. And stadium. Tucker fumbles the ball, picks it up. Under pressure, gets away, rolls right, throws it down the field into coverage, intercepted by who else? Ken Jones. Jones to the 20, 25, 30. He's down to the 40. Jones to the 50. Still on his feet. Great block. He's gone. Touchdown. If he can make it that far. And he does. He is giving out. Touchdown, Ken Jones. And you can wrap this one up for the Warriors. They're going to win this one. It looks like everybody is about dead. I mean, the conditioning is unbelievable. Nobody. Everybody looks like they're about to pass out there, Billy. And 10 Trojans at the 29-yard line. Hand off to Thomas. He is nailed. Chad Cook with the hit. Oh, Marcus Thomas. Oh, Billy, I felt that shake the press box. Moss. So what a lick on the part of Chad Cook. We said earlier that Casey Clark had the lick of the night, but not after that one. Chad Cook. Oh, you goodness. know, Mitchell, we had a lot of fun putting that together, <laughs> Billy Bob. Billy Nelson's out there watching. I vote number one to uh, here, here. his biblical vote <laughs> on the great tackle by Chad Cook. Oh, that was a hit of biblical proportions, I tell you. <laughs> called by Billy Nelson and yourself up on top of the press box. That was great. I loved it. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed the coaches' show, and uh, it's been an excellent football season. We had a lot of good football teams and some exciting plays. Hope you enjoyed it, and we're going to cut you to a uh, break here, and we'll see you next year, I guess, on TV7, TV34, the coaches' show.
35-40, still on his feet, cross midfield, down the 